Hello and welcome to this tutorial on mixing vocals. I hope you are doing well and today I'm going to talk to you about the overall process of mixing vocals. I'm not going to focus too much on any one particular plugin or process but instead I'm going to give you an overview of my mixing chain uh, so that you can see the kind of stuff that goes into a professional sound when it comes to mixing vocals. Now this is a tutorial only for you as a TrackSpark subscriber. So no one else gets to see this. This is unique to you. So I really hope you enjoy it. If you stick around to the end, I've got a free gift for you, which is uh, a set of multi-tracks, which normally cost $15. But as a reward for sticking around, I'll give you a link to get them for free. So vocals are very important, unless of course you're doing an instrumental. But anything that has vocals in it, uh, you need to focus on the vocals because that's going to have a huge effect on your mix. And I always find uh, that focusing on vocals is the quickest way to improve the quality of your mixes before focusing on other things like low end uh, and kick and bass and that kind of stuff. If you get the vocals right, it helps the whole mix. So in the words of Tony Visconti, who is a great producer, worked with loads of amazing acts like David Bowie, loads more. He says the vocal is probably the most important part of the mix and I wholeheartedly agree. So sometimes if you're doing um, an instrumental track with a tiny bit of vocal, something like that, the vocal is not going to be the most important part of the mix. But if you're recording rock, pop, hip hop, R&B, uh, even jazz and so many different electronic genres as well, the vocal is normally going to be the most important part. So what I'm going to do is before I go into... Uh, Pro Tools to show you my mixing process. I'm going to tell you a bit more about myself because you probably don't know anything about me. So I started learning guitar at the age of 11 and then moved to bass and started a band at the age of 13. You can see a photo of the band on the right there. Very cringy photo. I don't know why we're all so serious, but that's me on the far left. So like most people, I decided that I wanted to record our music at home because I didn't want to. We didn't want to fork out for a studio session. So we bought some equipment. Uh, and I thought it was going to sound great. I was so excited, but of course it sounded awful. So I dedicated the next year to improving our demos and I spent hundreds of hours reading free blogs, watching free videos and experimenting, trying to figure stuff out for myself. Uh, that's a photo of me about a year later um, with a crazy haircut and my mixer still sucked. So despite all of that work, I hadn't really got anywhere. Everything was so confusing. I didn't understand any of the terms. It was really daunting. Uh, I didn't know how to use compression and, and so many other things. And I just didn't really get anywhere through that kind of learning from free stuff and trying to figure it out myself. But then I got a studio internship at the age of 14 and I learned so much that I realized that I needed to learn from other people that were better than me if I wanted to progress at a decent rate. So I got an assistant live sound engineer role at the age of 15. I started buying reputable books from good authors and I started paying for courses both in person at local colleges and also online. And after learning from other people, my mixes started to really improve. And by the age of 17, I was charging bands to record in my home studio. So the obvious route from there was to go to university where I started getting more freelance work and I finished that with a first class degree. Uh, and that's a photo of me in the studio, which is where I spent most of my time during uni. After finishing uni, I started to get more freelance clients, uh, both mixing and mastering. I worked in a few studios around London, both as an engineer and as a musician. I started a website where I, I teach people about audio recording and mixing, and that's now got thousands of subscribers, uh, and that's where I spend a lot of my time now. I still do lots of freelance work as well, though, and that's kind of made me realize that Teaching's my well, my second passion to audio. So I started doing more writing, more teaching. Uh, I, I was scouted by Invited Touch Plus, who hired me as a writer, and I started teaching on Udemy. And I now have over twelve thousand students there. Udemy is just a, an online learning platform where people uh, put out video courses. So that's me in a nutshell. Just wanted to give you a quick uh, a quick overview. Uh, just realise I'm wearing the same shirt as in that photo which is kind of strange, but that's it. That's that's pretty much my life up to now. Uh, and now I spend a lot of my time teaching and doing freelance mixing and mastering. So now let's get on to the main part of this tutorial, 
and let's start talking about mixing vocals. So the flow chart that you can see in front of you now is what I call the vocal mixing formula. Sometimes we refer to it as a blueprint, but this is basically what I realized uh, after years and years of working with vocalists. It kind of works every time and I noticed that I was doing the same kind of process, not using the same settings, it's always different EQ and compression settings, but using the same system every single time. And then that's when I, I kind of developed a system and started to become a lot more consistent with my vocal mixes. And it's really important as a mixer to develop your own systems. And you can start out by replicating other people's systems and then you kind of combine several systems and butcher them up to create your own unique style and to create your own system. So what I advise you to do is actually steal this system, use it exactly uh, for yourself, see how it goes, change it to suit your style, change it to suit your music uh, and, and kind of see how it goes. But I highly recommend you try out using this exact formula. So I'm gonna briefly go over what each of these are now, but I'm gonna go into a, a bit more depth in Pro Tools in a second. So first of all, we have clip gain automation. And this is kind of like volume automation, except for we're automating the volume before it goes into the plugin. So we're adjusting the gain instead of the volume on the fader. Now this is beneficial because it means the volume going into the plugins is already consistent. So the compressors don't have to work as hard and we're always in that sweet spot of around minus 18 where the plugins are gonna work their best. So once we've done that, uh, we can gain stage just to check we are in that sweet spot. You wanna be around averaging around minus 18, peaking no higher than minus six. After that, surgical EQ, and this is where I'll remove any room resonances, remove the low end rumble, uh, and remove anything else like ugly mic characteristics, stuff like that. After that is de which is essential if you have a sibilant vocalist. This sometimes works better at the end, but sometimes it works here, so give that a go. And say so that's the only one that I move around a lot. It's just a case of moving it around the chain to see where it works best. After that is the first compressor. Now it's better to compress in several stages. Rather than being really aggressive with one single compressor, you should use several, each doing two to three dBs of gain reduction. And then you keep the tone, you don't over compress the vocal, but you still end up with the same level of dynamic consistency. So with this first compressor, we're gonna be quite soft, uh, a slower attack and release time, and only two dBs of gain reduction, just more tonal than dynamic control. After that, we're gonna use a tonal EQ, and this is gonna be wider cuts and boosts a high shelf to boost the top end and give it some air and expensiveness. Uh, if it's muddy, I'll cut around 300. If it's sibilant, you can try cutting some EQ. Or if it's nasal, you can try cutting some high mids. And here it's best to use an analog EQ if you have one. If you don't, don't worry. After that is the next compressor. And this time we're gonna be a bit more aggressive, a faster attack time, a bit more game reduction, maybe three, four dBs, uh, just to control the dynamics a bit more and make it really consistent. After that, we're gonna add some saturation, so just add some excitement to the top end, add a bit more air. Then we're gonna add a limiter, just to catch the loudest peaks to make sure it doesn't get too loud at any point. Um, and also add a bit more kind of tonal dynamic control as well. Then we're gonna add some reverb and delay. And I, use, I like to use really short, subtle reverb that you don't really notice, it just adds a bit of width. And then I'll mostly use delays to create space around the vocal. Because when you have a, a vocal that's got too much reverb, it's too much um, kind of wetness, it, it falls back in the mix and you want the vocal to be right at the forefront. So reverb's not really good for vocals. After that, frequency slotting. So if you boosted 1K to make the vocal cut through a bit more, you could then cut 1K on the guitars, the snare and any other competing instruments. And then finally, we're gonna use some more volume automation just to check that the vocal follows the dynamics of the song. And you can also use volume automation to improve the vocal in the sense that you can improve the rhythm if it's rapping, or you can increase certain syllables to change the delivery of the line. Um, a lot of vocalists have kind of really quiet nuances as they go into a word or end a word. And if you boost those, those quiet parts by five dBs, it really enhances the emotion of the vocal. So you can try that literally just the very first part of a word, the kind of bit that leads into the word, try boosting that. So now I'm gonna jump into Pro Tools and show you what each of these in a proper mix. 
So now I'm going to go through and show you those steps one by one uh, and how I've actually done them in a kind of real world mix. And this is actually a track that I played bass on, which is why I'm using it for a tutorial because I don't have to worry about copyright. So this isn't a client that I'm actually playing bass here, but it's kind of soft rock um, kind of music, some country vibes in there, uh, but it does get a bit more aggressive towards the end. Let me play a bit so you can just get an idea of what we're listening to. Would you forget about him? Or oh, that I threw you away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go again. I'm gonna lose my mind, just like you said. So, that kind of like soft rock genre. Um, I've applied the whole formula to this because it's quite mainstream and we want it to be kind of radio ready. It's that kind of mainstream end of, of soft rock. Um, I've gone a bit over the top just for the, the purposes of demonstration, just because I want to show you every single step. Uh, if this was a client, I probably would have been a bit more conservative just to maintain uh, the dynamics a bit more, but I wanted to show you. So first of all, click grain automation. And I was actually quite subtle with this on this track. So you can see a lot of this is around the same kind of level. And what I did was leave the intro untouched. The dynamics vary quite a lot in here. So I haven't gone crazy with click gain automation, but just to show you the actual process, if I was to click gain automate the intro as well, all I would do is add a cut, bring up the clip gain so that it's about the same as the rest of the song. And then what you can do is you can go through and any bits that stick out as being particularly loud or quiet, you can also add clip gain to them, like so. And you'd go through and you can either do it by section if you want to maintain more of the dynamics, or you can go crazy and do it by phrase or word so that it's really, really consistent. So this just means before we've even added any plugins, we've already got some dynamic consistency in the vocal. So once you've gone through and added clip gain automation, you can start processing your plugins. So the first thing that you want to do before you do anything is get a good balance on the vocal. So I tend to mix vocals last and I recommend you do the same because uh, that allows you to kind of put them on top of the music and then create space for them once everything else is already done. Generally, the thing that you mix last tends to be loudest as well. And we want vocals to be the loudest. So I recommend you mix them last. So what I would do is I would bypass all of these. I wouldn't have any plugins. And let's send this straight to the lead vocal. I don't think we've got any processing on that channel either. Nope, cool. So let's have a listen. And what I'm gonna do is just find the balance because that's the important thing. If you set a good balance at the beginning, you set a foundation where the vocals are gonna be at the right level. But if they're too quiet, you're constantly gonna be trying to make them loud with compression. If they're too loud, it's gonna affect your judgment too. It's also gonna affect the tone because if the vocals are louder, they're gonna sound different to if they're quieter in the mix. So spend at least five to 10 minutes just really getting the balance perfect. Um, use a, a fader, uh, a control surface if you can to kind of feel it. But what I'm gonna do here is just with the mouse, I'm gonna listen through and adjust the level. So let's get rid of any automation. you forget about him or that I threw you away yeah yeah oh, here we go again so I'm not going to do the whole thing here but you just want to feel that out make sure it's in a really good place uh, it was a bit quiet there so I might have to reduce that so the next thing to do is gain staging once you found a good level is to you forget about him. Yep, there we go. Use a plugin like this to make sure it's in that minus 18 sweet spot. So I'm going to play through for a bit 
Uh, it might need a bit of boosting. Let's have a listen. Don't you forget about him. Or that I threw you away. Yeah, yeah. Here we go again. Don't you forget about him. Or that I threw you away. Yeah, yeah. So there we go, just make sure it's in that sweet spot, averaging around minus 18. Um, and that means you've got plenty of headroom and it's also the equivalent of zero dB VU in the analog world. And a lot of plugins are tuned to that level. So if you're around minus 18, pushing past it a little bit, you're gonna be in the sweet spot. After that, we're gonna bring in subtractive EQ. So what I actually did here was a low cut. And then I think this was a bit of a room resonance. This was also a room resonance. And what I would have done is just gone through and just grab one of these. So that's currently at 355 minus four. So what I would do is I'd go through and sweep this around until I notice a sharp increase in volume. And that tends to mean there's a room resonance. So let's put that back to where it was. Let's have a listen, bypassed and unbypassed. Don't you forget about him Or that I threw you away Yeah, yeah Here we go again I'm gonna lose my mind Just like you said So it's really subtle, but it just cleans it up a bit. Because you're doing narrow cuts here, um, you wanna make sure you're using a cue that's quite high. Uh, you don't wanna use a wide cut like that because you'll be cutting out big chunks of the sound. And you can also be even more aggressive with your cuts because you're only doing wide cuts. Let's have a listen. Don't you forget about him. Don't you forget about him. Don't you forget about him. So now you can hear a bit more what that's actually doing. But let's reduce that to where it was before. Next up is the first compressor. So here we're going to use. Um, an attack time generally above five, you can go quicker, but this one you wanna let the transient slip through a bit more. Attack time dictates how aggressive the vocal sounds, because if the attack time's fast, the compressor's gonna clamp down on the transients, whereas if it's slower, the initial attack of the words and the consonants are gonna get through a bit more uh, and be louder than the rest, so that makes it sound more aggressive. So here we're gonna just aim for two to three dBs of gain reduction on this meter. Don't you forget about him. Or that I threw you away, yeah, 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 here we go again. You also want to make sure the volume's the same um, going out as it is coming in, so let's check that. Don't you forget about him. Or that I threw you away, yeah, 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 here we go again. I'm gonna lose my mind. Like you said, I'm gonna lose. So we go around two to three dBs there. After that, we've got our tonal EQ. And here I'm using Slate Digital plugins, but you can use anything. It doesn't have to be an analog EQ. I prefer to use analog EQ here if you do have one. Um, but don't worry, it's the same principle. So what I'm doing here is boosting the top end quite a lot. I've got two dB boost at 14K. I'm using Revival. Um, and I've got the shimmer knob turned up and that's also just a kind of top end boost. I'm then cutting at 4.16, I think it sounded a bit harsh and aggressive in that area. Also cutting at 855 and you'll notice these are all quite wide. Um, and then finally you've got a very slight boost at 50 hertz because even though a lot of the vocal isn't down there, when you boost the low end, it will kind of have an effect on the rest because when you use an EQ, you're not just affecting that one frequency. It's going to affect the entire spectrum in, in other ways. So when you boost the very bottom end, it tends to add a bit more depth um, and warmth to the vocal without kind of affecting the low mids and making it sound a bit too um, warm or, or kind of clogged up in the low mids. And then here I've also got just a boost at... 1.25k just to help it cut through a bit more tiny boost at oh, around 4k as well 
And that's it for Tony Lee Q. Let's hear that before and after. But you forget about him. a bit more so you can hear it it's subtle it's very subtle um but it makes a huge difference would you forget about him would you forget about him would you forget about him so it just sounds cleaner it sounds a bit more expensive you want to use a higher shelf of some description just to boost the top end with this you can even go down as low as 6k it didn't quite work for this vocal um, but anything above 6k will add to the expensiveness the very top end here is going to be a bit more airy. And then after that, we've got the second compressor. This time I've got um, a four to one ratio, which is slightly more aggressive. On these old school kind of style compressors, um, they, this works slightly differently. The ratio works more as a kind of tone knob. You can even select them all if you want. But here I'm using four to one, uh, fast release, slower attack. This is the opposite, so low is slow and high is fast. Uh, let's have a listen to that. Would you forget about him? Or that I threw you away? Yeah, yeah. Would you forget about him? Would you forget about him? So now we're starting to get that kind of compressed sound um, that we want. It sounds really consistent, more in your face. Uh, so let's leave that on. And you can see here I'm doing around minus four, five dBs of gain reduction this time. Then saturation, I highly recommend this this plugin, uh, the soft tube saturation knob. It's free, and this just dials in a bit more excitement on the top end. Would you forget about him? You can hear quite a big difference there. Would you forget But it's doing a bit of a um, gain increase as well. Now, because I'm using a limiter, uh, I had to actually increase the gain after this plugin. But normally, if a plugin in increases the gain and you don't want it to, um, and it doesn't have a gain knob on it, you will have to add a trim knob after it just to bring the gain back down to around minus 18. So let's just listen to that uh, with the same gain either side. Would you forget about him? 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 So you can hear it's just adding um, a lot of excitement and kind of fizzle on the top end that helps the vocal cut through a lot more. Would you forget about him? And then what I've actually got here is a limiter. And I decided to use Maxim. Uh, which is Pro Tools built-in limiter, could have used the compressor and just increased the ratio to 50 to 1 or as high as it will go. But I decided to use Maxim here, which is why I've got a trim plug-in. And this is because of the way Maxim works. So let's have a listen to this. Would you forget about him? Or that I threw you away? Would you forget about him? So we only want 2 or 3 dBs of gain reduction. Would you forget about him? Would you forget about him? And what I've done here is I've linked the two so that it works more like um, a Waves L1, which is why I'm using this trim plugin here. But all you need is a limiter and two or three dBs of gain reduction just on the loudest bit. So I know this is quite a climactic part of the song, so I know this is going to be quite loud. Um, let's bring the vocal down to a normal level. Would you forget about him? Would you forget about him? Or that I threw you away? Yeah, yeah. And actually, I'm going to increase the release a bit more to make it sound a bit more natural. Would you forget about him? So that's it. That's all we want, just to catch the peaks. Um, that's probably a bit more aggressive than I normally go, but just for the sake of demonstration. And then finally, here we've got the Diesa. You can see this is actually in a different place on the chain. Like I said, I sometimes move this around. 
So here we've actually got it at the end. Would you forget about him? Just handling some of that sibilance. In Pro Tools, uh, experiment with using the high FO, HF only, and that means it's only compressing the high frequencies, whereas this compresses the whole range. Um, sometimes, most of the time it works better with HF, um, sometimes it works better without. So that's it for plugin. So after limiting, it's then reverb and delay. So I'm just gonna show you what I've got going on here. I've got the vocal is being sent to everything. So we've got a plate, a room, a delay, and a time delay. So the plate is this short one here, and this is just gonna be really, really short, um, as quick as it could go. And all this is doing is just add in some stereo width. It's not a noticeable reverb. Let's have a listen. Would you forget about him? Or that I threw you so all you do is bring this up until you notice it and then back it off a bit. If I make it really exaggerated. Would you forget about him? You can hear how short that is. It kind of ends before the word even finishes. Would you forget about him? But what I'm going to do now is bring this up till I notice it and then back it off a bit. Would you forget about him? Or that I threw you away. Yeah, yeah. Here we go again. So it's really subtle, but it just adds a bit more width to the vocal, makes it a bit more stereo. Uh, Delay is going to be a stereo slapback delay. So here I've got 50 milliseconds on the left and 70 on the right, 10% feedback. So this again, just adds some width and we're going to do the same thing. I'll make it exaggerated so you can hear it. Then I'll back it off and bring it in till you can just feel it. Would you forget about him? So you can hear it, it just adds space. Um, it's not a, a long delay. This one's just really quick stereo slapback. Would you forget about him? Or oh, that I threw you away. Yeah, yeah. Here we go again. I'm gonna lose my mind, just like you said. So now the vocal sounds a bit less dry with that reverb and that delay. Time delay is a mono time delay um, that's tuned to, I think it's, a, it's either a half. Let's have a listen. Would you forget, Would you forget about, him? about him? Or that I threw, that you, I threw away. you away. Yeah, yeah. So this is good because it's in time with the music. It's not that noticeable. It just adds depth. And that's the great thing about time delays. Now you can use sync if you have the right BPM on your projects. Uh, and then it will be perfectly in time. And that makes it even less noticeable. But I like to tune it in manually with the millisecond control. Because then you can put it very slightly out of time with the music and then it's a bit more noticeable. So let's just bring that in till it's adding some nice depth, but without sounding too cheesy. Would you forget about him? Would you forget about him? Or that I threw you away. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we don't want it to be noticeable, it's just there to add some depth. And then finally I think I've got a tiny tiny bit going to the room. Would you forget about him? Not much at all. Like I said, I don't like to use noticeable reverb on the vocal. So that's it for reverb and delays. After that, I've then got some parallel processing tracks, um, chorus, parallel compression. I've got a reverb splash, um, parallel distortion, a few other things going on, but I don't have time to cover that now. In the instrument, I'm actually cutting every single instrument. So I've got all of the instruments here, which are actually stems, I bounce these down. Going to an all instrument bus, and then what I'm doing is cutting uh, just above 1K and around 4K, which is what I boosted on the vocal. And I've also got a bit of sidechain compression going on here, so I'm ducking the entire band to the vocal, but only a tiny bit. Would you forget about him? I think because I've messed with the gain, that's kind of ruined it. Let's try and tune this in. Would you forget about him? Or that I threw you away. So you just want that to be really, really subtle. Don't go over the top with that. The final thing is volume automation. 
uh, which you can see here, I've still gone pretty crazy because I didn't clip gain also make this song that much uh, because I wanted to maintain the integrity a bit more. I've, I've actually gone through and done a lot more volume automation. So you can see here um, lots of very, very small changes. And what my process is to get a fader port, a PreSonus fader port, which is this thing here. And this has got a great little fader on it. So what I'll actually do is I'll close my eyes or turn off the monitor, play through once with the vocal and just do that by feel. And this puts a bit more emotion back into the vocal because we've made it really dynamically consistent now. So now we just need to make sure it matches the song. So here you can see I've dropped it a bit for this last outro section. Uh, increase it a bit here just so it's on top of the music. But you just want to use automation to make sure it's always on top of the mix. It follows the dynamics. Then you can use it to boost the beginnings of certain words, uh, which let's find an example of that. You can see here I'm just doing a sharp boost at the end of a word as it tails off just to kind of um, increase that. Let's have a listen. Here we go again. Um, let's try it something else. Would you forget about him? So you can hear how that him is louder and that helps make the phrase a bit more um, impactful. Would you forget about him? And let's try this. That it's still yesterday. Let's make this more exaggerated. That it's still yet. That it's still yesterday. You can hear how he tails off. That it's still yesterday. That it's still yesterday. That day. You couldn't hear that before. And it's little things like that that when you boost them, um, it can really work. So volume automation is important too. Now that's it for the vocal mixing formula. I'm running out of time. There's so much more I could show you. Uh, parallel processes and a whole other thing. I'd like to go into more depth, but of course this is only a limited tutorial. So I'm not sure why you decided to watch this video. And there could be lots of reasons why you wanted to improve the quality of your vocals. But I'm guessing that you're struggling to make your mixes sound good. You've spent hours reading about audio and experimenting with your own recordings, but you just can't seem to improve and you feel frustrated. There's so much conflicting information out there. It's overwhelming and you don't know who to listen to and what to put into practice. Maybe you've been recording and mixing for years, but have hit a wall. You want to start getting paid work or expand your current client base, but you don't feel like your mixes are quite up to scratch. Or maybe, just like me, you only want to record and produce great demos of your own music. Listen, your vocals are letting your mixes down. The vocal is the most important part of any mix that includes them. Here are some common problems that I've come across when talking to people about their vocals. Sometimes the vocals just sound odd or they sound dull, but when you boost the top end, they become harsh. They could sound tinny and not quite loud enough in the mix. Or when you adjust the low end to add some warmth, the vocal then clashes with the guitars and other instruments. Perhaps the vocals sound like they don't belong in the same space as the music and you can't make the music properly wrap around the vocals while still maintaining the fullness, the texture, and the character of the voice and vocal. You see, audio engineering is a science, but producing and mixing great vocals is an art, and it's an art that can take years to perfect. But focusing on getting great sounding vocals is the quickest way to improve your mixes. And as soon as I started focusing on vocals, I noticed a very fast, significant improvement in the overall quality of my mixes. So here's a quick and easy way to learn how to produce vocals like a professional while sitting in front of your computer in the comfort of your own home without having to waste years of frustration figuring this stuff out for yourself, pretty much like I did. So imagine that feeling when your mixes sound professional, musical and expensive. What would you do if you woke up tomorrow and you could produce pro quality vocals? Think about it. How would your life be different? What would you do? Would you record your band? Would you start getting clients? Would you go out there and try and get an internship? Well, I'm excited to introduce my flagship masterclass, 30 Day Vocals. 
It's a proven step-by-step -step system that guarantees improvement. Have you ever spent hours learning about recording and mixing online or in books or even in other courses and masterclasses, but never put any of it into practice? It's all there in your brain, but the hard part is finding the time to actually do it. You know what you need to be doing, you just aren't doing it. And this is a really common problem that I've come across when talking to my students. So to solve these problems, this masterclass focuses on practice, exercises and accountability. It's taught in a step-by-step -step procedure, taking you through the vocal production blueprint with practical activities at every single stage. This way, you're guaranteed to get better at recording and mixing vocals. Ask yourself, how much is your time worth? The mixing process alone would probably take you well over a thousand hours to develop and figure out yourself. My university degree cost me $25,900 and I spent a lot of my time in the studio developing these techniques that I want to pass on to you. Don't get me wrong, you could figure all of this out for yourself the hard way. That's what most people do. Or you could take this shortcut and start putting out great music sooner by avoiding all of the mistakes that I've made. Cut out all the frustration, cut out all the wasted years and hours of hard work and shortcut your way there. So who is this masterclass for? Primarily it's for musicians who record themselves at home and want to get better at producing their own music. It's also for experienced engineers who run a home studio business and want to improve the quality of their, their work, their mixes, and start getting more clients or charging clients more due to the increase in quality. And it's also for engineers seeking a career in the industry that want to get a head start on the competition by being able to produce really great vocals from the off. This masterclass isn't for professional engineers who already run a professional studio because you've probably figured all of this stuff out by now. It's not for voiceover recordists and non-musicians. So if you're a voiceover actor, this course isn't for you. It's not for musicians who don't have an interest in recording their own music. If you're not interested in audio and you don't have a passion for it, I don't think that this course will help you. It's not for musicians who only write or produce instrumentals because you're not going to be working with vocals that often. And finally, it's not for people who don't care about the quality of their mixes because if you don't care, frankly, I can't help you. So here are some reasons why some of my students joined the course. Julian says the reason he joined was because he knows the first step to a good mix is the recording stage. And recording vocals in the home studio environment is pretty tricky at first. You have a lack of time, a lack of equipment, and you're on a limited budget. But you can hear some amazing tracks and success stories that started in home studios. Therefore, it is possible. So Julian wants to improve the recording quality. He knows that a good vocal is made in the recording phase and he wants to be able to record professional high quality vocals at home with his limited budget. Mike says, the number one reason I enrolled is to learn the best and most efficient ways to record and mix vocals. I took some audio recording classes many years ago in college and I've dabbled in music one way or another my whole life, but have just got serious again when I picked up the guitar for the first time since high school over the last year and a half. In that time, I've mostly been learning, but my guitar teacher also owns a professional studio and we sometimes learn our lessons in that area. I've just begun to work on a couple of solo EPs and at first they were going to be instrumental, but I'm going to attempt to sing on them. Because of that, I want to learn as much as I can about recording vocals and mixing them. So Mike is just a musician who records his own music at home and he wants to make sure that that music is the best quality possible so that he can send it out to labels, he can sell it to his fans and get more recognition, get the recognition that he deserves without having to spend hundreds on studio sessions. There's several bonuses that come with the masterclass. You get personal support and contact direct with me and the team to ask us about absolutely anything. There's a private Facebook community of people just like you where you can also get help and feedback on your work. Mixed templates are provided for Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Cubase and Studio One, but you can still take the course without them if you use another door and the course caters for every single door. It's not specific to one or another. You get three sets of multi-tracks across several genres. There's pop, blues, uh, rock, that track that you just heard in this video, that's included as a multi-track. 
and you can download these to practice mixing on and to use in your own portfolio. And there's plenty of downloadable resources, including checklists and cheat sheets. And my students have said the checklists are incredibly helpful because uh, it's easy to forget stuff. But if you use a checklist in a recording or mixing session, it makes sure you get absolutely everything done. Of course, there's also a 30 day money back guarantee. No questions asked, even if you've already completed the masterclass, I'll refund you if you're not happy and you can even keep the resources. So what are people saying about this course? Well, Chaz said, I'm really enjoying this, Rob, and I'm coming out of my comfort zone, which is frightening, but I'm learning so much with regards to music audio. I'm doing a new track this weekend as I work on the modules, Practice Makes Perfect. And Chaz has come along really well since he joined the masterclass. Lisa, a jazz vocalist and a home recordist, says, Rob is very articulate in his delivery, very upbeat and without a doubt, interesting and engaging. Rob's enthusiasm for the craft and for teaching it to others is palpable and spirited, rendering his courses that much easier to absorb. So if you're interested in this masterclass, and I highly recommend you go check it out because it could be a turning point in your career as a home recordist or an engineer. So head to 30dayvocals.com. Now the course it's actually currently closed to the public. Because of the engagement that I have with students, I can only take on so many students per month or per year. And I recently opened it in February, got a load of students in that I'm now working through the course with, and I wasn't planning on opening it for another few months. But when Tim approached me about doing something for TrackSpark, I thought this would be a great opportunity to open the course only to TrackSpark subscribers. So no one else can get access to this. I'm opening it just for you, and unfortunately it will have to close again at the end of this month on the 31st of May at midnight Pacific. So make sure you join before that time because it's not gonna open again for a while. And I make sure that every student has gone through the course, work with them personally to go through the course before I open it up again. As a subscriber, you also get two additional multi-tracks and this is a gift from me to you um, as a TrackSpark subscriber and these are worth about $30, so that's a, a great little bonus. And I'll also send you a free copy of Mixing Heavy Music by Jordan, a good friend of mine, um, and this is a $10 ebook all about the basics of mixing to a professional standard. Really useful stuff. It's not just specific to heavy music. It's great for rock, anything that includes that kind of typical rock band setup of guitar, drums, bass guitar, vocals, that kind of setup, it's perfect for. And it goes through everything, really applicable, easy to understand advice. So head to 30daybvocals.com. There's a lot more information over there. There's a few more testimonials. There's a great video that will show you inside the course and I can't wait to see you very soon inside the masterclass. So as a thanks for sticking around, here's your free gift. I'm gonna give you some multi-tracks by Joe Corbin. Great live track, absolutely amazing performer. Kind of blues rock, very soul, neo-soul vocals. Really nice track to mix. Um, it's live, so it's only nine channels, so it's nice and easy. Great little live track to get on your portfolio. Or just to practice mixing on. So if you go to 30daybvocals.com slash free gift, just type that into your browser and add that to your basket. And then when you get to the checkout, just use the coupon code, I'll be practice and that will be free. So thank you so much for watching. Head to 30daybvocals.com to check out the masterclass because those bonuses are expiring soon and also the course is closing very soon. So be sure to check that out. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you very soon.